Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Roadie Rumble podcast. My name is Adam Bernstein. Today we are joined by Coach Sharni Zoll Norman. She is the assistant coach of the URI women's basketball team. Thank you for taking the time today. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, a question we always like to start with um, and ask is what is your why or what motivates you? Yeah, I think I'm most motivated by, you know, trying to make my family and make God proud. You know, I've been really blessed abundantly in my life with a, a great support system, with friends, with family, um, you know, of course, with a career that I love and a, and a job that I that I love to do. And so I just want to make them proud every day that hopefully that I'm pouring into other people the way that they poured into me. Absolutely. So I want to start with just your playing career and growing up um, playing basketball and then move on to your coaching career and where you are today. Um, okay. So originally you lived in New Jersey. Uh, for the most part growing up. Um, how did you get into basketball? Were you always attracted to the sport? Did you kind of find that love for the game itself on your own? Yeah, so my dad played um, and I literally wanted to do everything that he did. So I would carry his gym bag or more so drag it um, around just so I could be with him. And so everything that he did, I wanted to do when I was younger. And when I got to the age where I could play and work out with him and practice and learn, um, I just loved it. I, I love the game. I love getting better. I love that no matter what and how good I felt like I was, there was always something else to be better at. And it, it just, it really just played into who I was and, and really my family. For sure. And I know you played at Virginia uh, mm -hmm. from 2004 to 2008. Um, but really, what was that process like getting recruited to play for them? Uh, ultimately, you know, how did you make the decision to play for UVA? Um, and, you know, what made you want to commit there? What was it about um, the culture that they had there? Yeah, so I played AAU for the Philadelphia Bells. And so with that, it was kind of like the, the EYBL circuit before the EYBL really started. Um, so I got a chance to go to a different, bunch of different colleges, play in front of these college coaches and, and travel a bunch. And, you know, I, I got to go on UVA's grounds and see the campus, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, I got to know and meet all of different coaches, coaching staffs, teams, um, and kind of really realized what I wanted. And, and UVA fit all of my wants and needs. Um, it was on the East Coast, so it was close to home. Not close enough that my parents could just pop up on me, but close enough that if there was an emergency, they could come help me. Um, academically, obviously, UVA is an extremely prestigious university. A degree, a degree from there you know, allows for you to pursue a career that you want. And athletically, you know, I, I was able to meet a coaching staff that loved me for me as a person and player. Um, I was able to meet a team that their culture was set in terms of winning was important, but it was how you won was really more important. And I knew that I would grow as a young woman and as a player there. And one of the biggest things was Coach Ryan, the coach there, she knew how to coach point guards. I mean, she coached Coach Reese. She coached right. Stone Daly, Dina Evans. Some of the best basketball minds that have, have gone through this game and are still in this game have come through UVA and Coach Ryan. And so I knew that going there, gaining that knowledge, um, being able to have that and grow in that environment would be, you know, best for me. Yeah, you had an amazing career there. A 1,000 point scorer, two-time All-ACC third-team honoree, um, and most widely known for holding the ACC assist record with 785. Um, you know, what was that collegiate experience like for you playing at that level, um, you know, playing in the ACC too, which is a power five conference? Yeah. I mean, college to that point in my life were the best four years of my life. Like, you know, UVA socially, I was able to meet some of my best friends, right. And grow as a young woman. Academically, I learned kind of the question, the why, and those two aspects of life helped me on the court. I think I was able to get through hard times and, and tough times because I had a support system. I was able to understand that basketball wasn't the only thing that I had, you know, as I was, I was dealing with the hard academics, but then playing in a, in a, a conference like the ACC, I mean, night in and night out, I was playing against some of the best that you could, you could have. Right. It, when I was coming through, I mean, we had four top, top 10 teams in our conference. And so I knew that I was battle tested. And if I wanted to be a pro, I had to play against the best and the ACC provided me that opportunity. Absolutely. Um, I also just want to touch on while you were in college playing in the summer of 2005, uh, being named to the gold medal winning USU 19 world championship team. What was that summer like for you? I mean, not often do uh, people get to go and play in the Olympics, but what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so it was it was a um, it taught me a lot of life lessons and basketball lessons. So 
this was the first time in my life where I wasn't a starter or a main player on the team, right? I had to learn, like I was humbled in a lot of ways. I had to learn how to come off the bench, the mental aspect of it, the physical aspect of it. Um, I learned a lot from Coach Guestin Course, Coach Jack, who we just played at, at Buffalo, actually. Um, and I learned a lot of, a lot, lot of those lessons. Um, and then I learned to be humbled. Like my parents were in the Air Force and I went and played in a FIBA tournament with USA on my chest you know, going overseas and being able to be in Africa for the first time, play in Hungary and play representing America was probably one of the greatest experiences I could have had. Um, so when it, say I won a gold medal with, with the USA basketball team is, is absolutely amazing. That is incredible. Um, following graduation, you were selected 29th overall in 2008 uh, by the LA Sparks. What was that WNBA draft like for you? You know, what is the process entering your name into that? Um, and ultimately just getting drafted by a WNBA team playing at the professional level? Yeah, I mean, it was insane. You know, um, it was a dream since I was 10 years old, right? But right. before I was 10, it was like, oh, I want to be the first girl in the, in the NBA. And I'm, you're young enough to not understand that. You know, your right. whole lifetime, there's been a WNBA. Mine, it wasn't. And so my whole life, every day when I was dreaming, after 10 years old, I was dreaming to be in the WNBA and to be drafted one day. Um, and so it was a dream come true right? After college ends, you feel like the whole world is ending at some point, right? You're, you're leaving your sisters, your family. It's something now, now you're playing for money and it's a job. So it was, it was hard. Um, but then when you think about it every night, every sacrifice, not going to parties, not kicking it with my friends, all of those sacrifices, all of the dedication, the hard work, the tears, the, the surgeries, all of those things was like, this is what it, it's come to this. Now you're able to live your dreams out. And so, while it was extremely difficult, it was probably, um, it was the most nerve wracking day of my life for sure. But um, it was also probably one of the, one of the greatest. Absolutely. I uh, spent some time with the Minnesota Lynx that season as well. Yeah. Um, can you just share, you know, what that was like also just playing for them? It was great. I mean, I got to learn from some of the greatest to play the game, right? I was playing behind Lindsey Harding. Um, I was able to see like Simone Augustus up close and personal every single day, her drive. I learned how to be a true professional um, that summer, right? I, I learned some of the, the, the tactics, the eating habits, um, all of those things that don't have anything to do with basketball, really, right? How you take care of your body, how you recover, how you eat, the way that you conduct yourself as a professional. I was able to really witness that firsthand from a lot of veterans. And then I also got to go in with couple of my best friends. I mean, you know, I was playing with uh, Candace Wiggins, who I'd grown up playing with my whole life at Nike camp. She was from the West Coast. Um, Nikki Anasike, I played with her in AAU and we were on a WNBA team together. Um, it was really, really cool. So I was able to have veteran leadership, but also some rookies that, that were going through the same thing I was going through. Yeah. And you talk a lot about playing in the United States at the professional level, which is essentially, you know, every athlete's dream is just to play at the professional level. Um, mm -hmm. most end up playing overseas like yourself. You played 11 seasons there in Romania, Turkey, Poland. Um, just what was that experience like, not only to play in different countries, but also just to be a part of a new culture and kind of embrace um, all the places that you travel to around the world at such a young age as well? Yeah, so the best part about playing basketball overseas is the experiences that you get to make, right? Yeah. Traveling, like it allows you to learn so much about others. And ultimately, then you learn about yourself. Right. So, you know, it gives you I was able to engulf myself in cultures. You, you don't really get to do that. You can visit for a couple of couple of days, even for a couple of weeks you visit. It's not the same thing. I mean, it's like I was plopped into a whole nother country with other languages and, and other people. And you realize certain things about yourself, um, how strong you are, how much you do rely on family and support. And for me, I got to live in Poland for nine years. So I made great friends with old, older people and younger people, right? People who lived through com communism and could tell me stories. I learned a new language and I was able to see places in the world that, you know, most people only get to see in history books. And so Poland became my second home. Europe became my second home and all because of around basketball, right? One, one right. basketball has given me and afforded me those opportunities and I'm forever grateful. I always give those athletes a lot of credit for, you know, making the move and transitioning overseas. A uh, question that just came up is really just about the language barrier. Was it difficult for you or, you know, how challenging was it on and off the court to communicate with your teammates and some of the coaches there? Man, it's, it's really hard, right? So yeah. 
it, it's difficult because I went to smaller, smaller cities, right? So some places you go, it's like a little bit more Americanized that English, everybody speaks it. Well, I went to a place my first year overseas where no one spoke English. I mean, the coach barely spoke English. I was relying on one of my teammates who happened to be another point guard to translate everything to me. And it was broken right. English at that. So it's really, really hard, right? Because you just don't know. You have to trust somebody. I mean, wholeheartedly. You're walking into a supermarket. You have no idea. There's no Frosted Flakes. There's no peanut butter. You're like, is this a, is this turkey? Is this chicken? Or is this mystery meat? Like, I have no, I have no idea, right? Um, but again, it, it teaches you so much about yourself because then you're able to say, well, I can go and sit in my room and sulk and, you know, feel sorry for myself, or I can try and learn. And now I can broaden my horizons. Now I can show someone else, hey, I respect your culture. Teach me. And you become friends with people because now you're trying to learn and now they're learning English, you're learning another language and it's hard for sure, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And you topped off your professional playing career, uh, returning back to WNBA, I believe playing with the Chicago Sky. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you started to kind of transition into coaching. Did you always know you wanted to coach, especially at the collegiate level or how did that really come up? Yeah, when I was younger, I did not. Right. I I was like, no, there's no way. I just want to coach pros. And then while I was at UVA, Coach Ryan, you know, she just spoke that into existence and spoke it into me. And, you know, she told me that's something that I should strive for. And, and, you know, she had me take psychology in order to better understand others and said, listen, this is this is the way to go. And since then, she's been just talking it into me and saying, listen, the game needs people who have been through it. Right. There's a special thing to say for I know what you're feeling. I felt it, too. Um, and this is the relatability factor. And so I think once I got out of college and I realized how much I was with my college coaches, how much they helped me grow as a young woman and helped me grow when my parents weren't there, I was around them more than my parents and I had phenomenal coaches. I felt like I should give back. And that's just what I'm trying to do now. Yeah. From every athlete or former athlete that I've spoken to, I really feel that there's always at least one or two coaches that really sticks with you. Um, which is, again, why I think a lot of people go off and become coaches to kind of give um, athletes that same experience or opportunity that, you know, they had growing up. So that's really amazing. Um, I do want to touch on URI now and, and transition on to um, your time there, which has been under the Coach Reese era. Uh, I'm a junior now, so I've lived or I've been uh, here at URI. My, my URI, life, URI life has been uh, pretty much under this new women's basketball era. But my dad went to the University of Rhode Island, so I've kept up with some of the teams here. Um, and the women's basketball team has not always succeeded in the past, but since Coach Reese and this coaching staff that she's brought in um, mm-hmm. two years back in 2019, we've seen a lot of success. So I do want to get into that. Uh, okay. So since, since 2019, you've been the assistant coach or yeah. one of the assistant coaches under Coach Reese's staff uh, mm-hmm. here at URI. You know, what was that hiring process like for you? Um, I know that Tammy also played at Virginia as well as the NBA. So did you know her personally through that connection or did you kind of meet her through this entire process? So I've always known of Coach Reese, right? I've always heard like about Tammy Reese and Dawn and that team and, you know, the greatness of who she was. And it's funny, people used to always tell me like when I was in college, you look like Tammy, like you look Mm -hmm like Tammy, right? I think it's the curly hair and light eyes probably. Um, So I've always known of her. And, you know, when I was in between like the WNBA, if I didn't play in the WNBA and I was playing overseas, I was also coaching AAU and running tournaments. So I would see Coach Reese on the road, like on the recruiting trail and say hello, but it wasn't very personal. And so I hired an agent knowing that I my end of my playing career was coming. And my agent also represents Coach Reese. And so Um, I was able to meet her through that. And the hiring process was, you know, when I heard that Coach Reese was coming here and I I heard of her values and her morals and how she wanted to build a program, I was like, I don't care if I'm done, I'm done playing. Um, And so when she got the job and was able to say, hey, listen, I'll I'll give you a chance. I I knew I had to put my best foot forward and and try and get with her in any capacity that I could Um, because she is a a born winner, right? Her, Her energy is infectious and the way that she wants to build a program, she wants to do it the right way. And so I believe wholeheartedly in in everything that she does. And that's how I live my life as well. She gives some great quotes to uh, the press conferences that the energy definitely shows on and off the court. Yes. Um, I just want to talk about uh, just the last three seasons again for the program. Last season, you guys finished off uh, 11 and eight coach Reese was named the A-10 coach of the year as well. 
Um, you know, unfortunately that season was really, you have to look at it with an asterisk only because of all the circumstances and everything, but still a successful um, and pivotal, um, you know, season for the program, which, you know, we took a, a big leap on that winning streak last season. Yep. Um, the, this year, they were projected to finish uh, second in the A-10. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys open up the season with a seven-game win streak, currently sitting at eight and three. Mm-hmm. What has this, you know, experience been like? You know, also just how you've seen the morale kind of shift in the locker room because of the team's performance. Yeah, so I think, you know, we do have some, some newer players, right? So they haven't been here to build kind of how this has gone. Um, and so I think our team morale is we're still trying to find that team chemistry we're working towards getting to who we want to be. And, you know, for us, like being projected second, okay, great. But at the end of the day, Coach Reese says this all the time, like we haven't done anything, right? That's a projection. That's other people's opinion of us. And so if you focus on that solely, then you'll allow for other people to determine whether you're playing well, you're not playing well, your experiences. For us, I think we're trying to figure out the process of it. And so if you want to choose a time to lose three games in a row, it's now. (laughs) <laughs> if you want to change that time to figure out how do we grow through this, what are things we have to learn to get exposed in ways it's now. And so for us, I think we're looking at it as, Hey, it's a learning experience. You, you definitely learn more from losses than you do from wins. And so we've gotten back into the gym. We've had some time now to, to get things together and to learn. And I think that our team is realizing that the process is extremely important. And so that's where we are. And, and after these next two games, we'll actually have a lot of time to fix some of the things that we've seen over this, you know, 11 game stretch so far. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of college basketball or just college athletics in general is that projections really don't mean anything. You see upsets all the time. You see the <laughs> Cinderella stories and everything like that. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many different examples of that. Um, but like you just said right there, I just want to touch on that. You know, the non-conference schedule has been going well, but if there's any time to make mistakes or, have those losses that you learn from it's now because it really is a long season. So I guess with that, going off of that, you know, what are your expectations for the rest of the season? Just how do you look at this upcoming conference schedule and, you know, what, what is kind of the mentality going in that you want to keep um, the winning coming and just finish off on the right foot? Yeah. So I think, especially with our, our conference, right. The a 10, you know, we're not normally a two, two team bid league, right? So that means you got to win the conference tournament. So you want to learn and grow and be on an upward tick going into the conference tournament. That means you might have to take some bumps and bruises early. You may have to take some in conference. But what I want for us is that every day we come in and we get better. If we do that and we don't take for granted any days, we don't lose any days, we don't say this day doesn't matter, I think we'll be okay. And I think we'll be able to peak at the right time. If we fall into the trap of A, feeling too high on ourselves when we win or feeling too low on ourselves when we lose, I think we'll lose days. And we, we, we can't afford that. Right. Because we have people in our conference like Dayton, Fordham, VCU who have championships. We don't yet. We haven't learned as a team how to win those championship games. It's not proven yet for us. And so I think if we can learn to win every day, then that will then build the foundation that we need to win a championship. But that's not what our focus is. Our focus is every day winning that day. Absolutely. Um, another question, because I'm just thinking a lot of questions based off of this season. You guys put up 100 points a lot, um, which is, you know, you yeah. don't really see that a lot. So really, uh, they're just the depth on this team off the bench and just on the starting five and on the court at all times, is it's so, you know, deep just in general, the rotation. Um, you know, what goes into kind of, preparing all of these players because there are a lot of international players as well on this roster what goes into kind of preparing them and helping them transition into the american collegiate or college experience and then getting them to play at the atlantic 10 level yeah so i mean obviously coming over here is very difficult but being able to live that right so coach a he's from france he's come over here and lived, so he's had to transition coach shoniker she played overseas So she knows what it's like to go and be dumped into a country and have to adjust. Same thing with me, right? And so we're able to share that with them and understand that, hey, it's difficult, but here's how we can help you, right? So that's in terms of life, in terms of basketball. And then for us, I think the way that we want to play 
it's hard to play at, at, at 30 some minutes a game, right? 40 minutes a game, the way we want to play. So we prepare them by teaching them the right way to play. We have them in the gym, you know, our practices are built for player development. You know, if we all grow as players, 3% each day, well, how much is that helping our team? So they do a lot of extra, you know, work workouts with player development coaches with us. They do a lot of film work. And then coach holds them accountable to doing what they're supposed to do, their roles on the court. So defensively, the only way we can score 100 is if we stop people and now we can run, right? That's what we want to ultimately do. If we're playing defense hard and we're running, well, you shouldn't be playing a whole bunch of minutes because you're going to be kind of tired, right? And so all of us are able to kind of get our rotations, use that depth that you speak of, and kind of just get everybody confident in these games to understand, hey, we're not just a one-trick pony. We're able to knock down some threes or beat you in the paint or get into the paint and kick. We're learning how to do all of that and play together. And so, you know, hopefully that continues. I mean, if we're scoring 100, I don't don't know, right? But that means we need to be defending um, first and foremost. Absolutely. Um, I just want to move on. I have a couple of questions left. Uh, So we're now and actually played UVA back on November 26th. Yeah. Um, Cavalier Classic. Uh, what was that like to return back to, you know, campus and John Paul Jones Arena as a coach this time around? Man, it was surreal for me, really, like to look up and those same stands that I played in for two years that I scored my thousand point that I had, you know, my parents, my grandmother in for my senior day, like it, they all those memories came rushing back to me. Right. And then once the ball tipped, it was like, OK, boom, business mode. You know, and so it was it was really, really cool. I mean, I don't I don't think I could have imagined it any better. Uh, well, yes, I could have. We could have won the whole tournament. Um, <laughs> but other than that, being able to play there and have those memories and understand, you know, what has gone into that program and now hopefully see that Coach Reese and I and Coach Shoniker and Coach A can build a program like that, right? Bring those values that both of us have learned at UVA and now bring them here to URI and, and build this foundation and build this program up, I think was, was really cool. Yeah, that is cool. Um, I can't imagine, you know, returning after all the memories and things that you have there, uh, returning, but on a different end of the spectrum this time being a coach. Um, but going off of that, really, and just transitioning, is there someone that you – I guess, model your coaching style after. Did you have a coach uh, that you grew up? We talked about coaches that really stick with you uh, growing up as a player. Did you have one of those coaches? Um, You alluded to a couple of them before that you sort of give that same respect to and that you look up to. Yeah, so, I mean, I've I've had tremendous coaches my whole life. Um, I think I've been blessed with that. I I don't have any bad experiences with coaches. I've learned something from all of them. I think I, I have three really, or really four really great ones. My dad would be my first, right? Probably the hardest on me. He would, you know, if I kicked the ball, he would make me go run and get it, right? But the, your first is always your best. Um, I had two AAU coaches who were phenomenal, um, Coach Lynch and Coach Creech, who taught me that the responsibilities of a point guard, right? They held me to such a high, high standard and high esteem that it was almost like I was always failing, but they loved on me so much that I never felt like a failure, if that makes sense. Right. So if I turned the ball over, it was my fault. Even if it went through somebody's hands, if I was on the bench and somebody turned it over, well, they yelled at me because I was the point guard and I really learned how to be that point guard and be that leader. And then right after that, I went to play for coach Ryan, who again, still loved on me and showed me that she cared for me as a player, but she cared for me enough as a, as a person to hold me accountable and to make sure that I couldn't make excuses for myself, I couldn't play victim, and that she told me the things that I didn't like to hear um, to make me a better person and player. And so I think, you know, those four collectively have really just given me the model that I want to follow. Absolutely. Um, So the last question I have for you is just, you know, what advice would you give uh, to young basketball players or just really athletes in general looking to follow in some more footsteps as you? Um, and go on to play at the collegiate and professional level? Yeah, I think there's, there's a couple things. First and foremost is, um, you know, your sacrifices, your dedication, your hard work will pay off. And only you know what you're sacrificing. So, you know, this generation, you guys are blessed with being able to have such a wealth of knowledge with terms of, you know, nutrition, recovery, um, the best training tools. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean anything if you're not going to implement it. So implementing those things now will make you feel comfortable, make you feel prepared to go against the best or be the best you that you can be. 
So really sacrifice the party to go work out, right? Sacrifice the hamburger to eat the, the chicken and broccoli and rice, even if it doesn't taste great all the time, but that's going to put you at your, your optimum level as an athlete. Um, and then don't be so, um, I don't even want to say competitive. Don't be so like me, me, me to where you can't be held accountable because you've got to be held accountable to a high standard in order to reach your highest levels. And it's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. And it doesn't always feel good. But at the end of the day, when you re reach your goals and you reach your dreams and you're holding up a trophy or you're, you know, you're, you're holding up your draft jersey, you're going to feel like all of that was worth it. And when somebody doesn't love you, they won't hold you accountable, won't tell you the truth. But when they do and they want the best for you, they will. And so listen to those people. Let those people coach you to allow you to be the best you. Absolutely. That's great advice. Uh, coach, thank you again for taking the time today. Um, wishing you guys and the team the best of luck the rest of the way through. Definitely be rooting for you guys. Um, I hope you and your family also have a happy holiday and a great New York uh, New Year as well. Um, and of course, go Rody. Yeah, go Rody. Thank you, and same to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press I want for show you gonna need three foot motors. I got the battery from Jim Ellis, but I had switched the motor. I got these badass bitch riding around this bitch, and they all the coders. Yeah. I just told her make a story. Yeah. I just bought all the Trojans. Yeah.